All right. Well, welcome, everyone. We are back at it uh, for our first Peter study um, as a staff. So before we get rolling, Pastor Jacob, will you open us up in prayer? Absolutely. And as uh, we start the study today, I'm going to spend that time in God's Word. It's going to be good. Um, remind you all that we have a Facebook video with our announcements that Brian had put on the other day talking about, you know, easing back into services, phasing back into that. So all the details are there. We also sent it out through email, but um, if for some reason you haven't seen it or haven't uh, been able to access that, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, we'll be glad to, to help you out. But if you haven't seen that, we encourage you to watch it on Facebook or YouTube. Look for it in your email as we sent the link out uh, for everybody this week. And again, if you have any um, challenges getting access to that please don't hesitate to let us know we'll be glad to help we want everybody to be um, informed as much as possible with what we're doing right now and how we're phasing back into gatherings and just the life of the church if you have any questions uh, please let us know so let's pray together and we're gonna dive into God's Word Father God thank you so much for this day thank you for life God thank you that you are forever faithful and every day your your mercies are new um, God, many, uh, amidst challenges and trials and struggles, your, your mercy is even more. Your grace is greater. And uh, Lord, we thank you for that. Your grace is sufficient. Father, today as we open your word, give us wisdom, give us guidance, um, give us your blessing to know you more. Lord, we don't uh, study to say that we know more words or we can quote more scripture. We study to know the author of the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, God, we thank you for your revelation of the word of God to us. And Lord, as we study it, we, we grow in love for it and love for you. Lead us and guide us and forgive our sins in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we're at, uh, chapter three verses one through seven. Today. So, um, Andrew, you mind reading for us? No, here we go. It says this, Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Amen. So uh, before we get rolling with our discussion, I think it's uh, for our viewers, it's uh, worthy to um, admit our one-sidedness on this text <laughs> that uh, we got a bunch of dudes that are talking about a text that has one verse about husbands and six verses about wives. And so um, please give us the grace that we don't deserve um, as we tackle this text. Um, so before we, or I guess as we jump in, um, what kind of jumps out to you as important in this text? Well, I, I just want to say, you know, first of all here, it begins, you, it, the version he read from says likewise, which I think some of the translations do. Mine says in, in the same way. And this is really a follow-up to the, our last two studies that we've done comes out of obviously the holiness that Peter talked about. And then how do you kind of live out that holiness in the world? We talked about it from a governmental perspective. We talked about it kind of an employer employee relationship. And so this is more part, you know, and, and both of those went back to live this way in order to glorify God and to hopefully bring people into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And this is really just a furthering of that, you know, concept and idea. Uh, we are to live in such a way you know, that we, that we, that our lives, you know, are beneficial and, and glorify God in the kingdom. And mm -hmm. it's obvious here, I think that uh, these are probably, I would imagine a fairly Gentile audience. I would assume that many of the people that he's talking to 
maybe a wife became a believer. The husband is still not a believer, obviously. Uh, maybe there's husbands that are believers. Uh, their wives are not. Their wives may be. Uh, but it kind of talks about the whole gamut of, you know, if, if we're going to live this life of holiness, you know, in, in, a, in a relationship setting, in a family setting, you know, what are some guidelines, you know, that we should be able to do? And, and I know we, we talk a lot about, you know, this word submission, um, but, but Peter is, I mean, the fact that he begins the section by saying wives um, it is huge. And, and because that really shows from Peter's perspective and God's perspective, uh, just how incredible they are and the status that they deserve in God's kingdom. Uh, because certainly in that time as a Roman, if she had been the, just the Roman secular Gentile, she would have been barely more than a slave, maybe a little bit more in the Hebrew context. Uh, but Peter is clear here that your value is so much more in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. How about uh, Jacob, Andrew, what do y'all think is, what, what kind of jumps out to you is important about this text? Man, it's, um, of course, you know, like, like Peter said, the number one, I think this is really a good text sometimes to, and, and we don't have the time to walk through every root word, right? In the whole, but this is one of those texts that is a good, is, is a good, um, text to do some of those word studies on. Um, but yeah, in the same way as the CSB, um, uh, my ESV has likewise, <laughs> And uh, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Well, the word submit there um, is one of those words we look at. And we, you know, in the English, if we're not careful, um, we can draw our own ideas about what that means. Um, we definitely need to make sure that we uh, balance it out with the rest of the text. Because it, if you contrast it and compare it to say Ephesians right in chapter five where it says something similar but it goes on to say and why and husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that are that the husband is supposed to be willing to die for the wife to love them that much right and I mean I know I fail miserably at times and at least in expressing that I mean I do believe in my heart I I would always do that but I don't always express it the way I should, right? So when it says submit here, we, ha we just have to remember all the way back to Genesis, God's plan, that the, the plan was complementary, not, um, well, I'm going to create man, and then I'm going to create woman. It was, I'm going to create man and woman. And, you know, uh, she's going to, to help this man because he knows how hard-headed we were going to be. Uh, you know, so yeah, just really uh, remembering that it is a very complementary relationship uh, in God's plan and God's creation. The way one way I've always liked to say it is that we uh, have equal spiritual value, equal um, accessibility to relationship with God. The reality is we have different roles and we're created for different purposes. Mm -hmm. And those purposes complement each other. And so it's unfortunate that our culture has created um, a division or a, a rift, a derision about, you know, man and woman. I mean, we're both created awesomely and we're both created for great purposes. And we're supposed mm -hmm. to respect and love each other in our differences mm -hmm. and, and value those differences, you know? Right. I think what... <clears throat> It's uh, interesting about what you what you said, um, or highlighting that submit is that um, I think it's important to recognize that um, submission is a is you are reflecting the character of Christ when you do that because yeah. Jesus lived his life submitted to um, the Lord's will, and it's not. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm in no no way saying that um, men are equal to God in this metaphor, <laughs> but right. that but living in that submission, um, they you know ladies really do wives really do put on display um, what it what it means to live in submission to God, um, 
and that kind of, that sort of Christ likeness. Um, and, and so I think that that's kind of a, it's not just, I guess to, it's not just a cultural thing. Um, it's a theological thing. It really does. It really, it really does mean something uh, yeah. when this is lived out. Well, not to, not to, but to give a, a current modern day illustration that is perfect in my mind for this text, especially the early part of it, is listening to Lee Strobel's testimony. Mm, I yeah. mean, his, his wife winds up getting saved. He is very uh, antagonistic toward the gospel and uh, not happy that she's gotten saved and going to church and all of this. And, you know, probably would have been easy for her to say you know what you know I'm done with this I'm not taking that mm -hmm. but instead she loved him through it and she was gracious to him and she was patient with him and I, I you know all of our wives are those of us that I know all three of us and uh my wife especially is very long-suffering and uh and it is that witness you know Paul talked about it in the letter to the Corinthians in first Corinthians chapter 7 in a very similar way and he told the ladies there, if you have an unbelieving spouse, if he wishes to remain, then remain with him, that your love may lead him toward holiness. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's not always easy. That's the one thing I want to make very clear. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm not saying in any way I've counseled, and I'm sure Peter has, and, and even you guys probably have, I've counseled in plenty of situations where it was not easy but the reality was, biblically speaking, you know, you have to look at a lady and say, hey, God really loves you and his grace will sustain you. And right now, from what you're telling me, the word of God says you need to hang in there and love, you know, and sometimes just to be real blunt, sometimes you're saying you really need to love this church, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. right. So it's tough. I'm not, you know, I just don't want to make light of it. And I don't want anybody to think that that I in any way think that it's easy or that they should always be just, you know, super sweet and all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I think that it's worth saying that um, the roles can be reversed and I'm not sure yeah. that um, Peter would be unhappy with us taking that um, perspective and, and, and knowing that, you know, husbands could be required to and they would have, and I would imagine it would w require a little bit of a, of a mutual submission to their wives, to, um, to their spiritual weakness, um, to kind of bring them along until, um, they have an encounter with Christ and it could be Absolutely. a very similar thing. And I certainly think, you know, one of the terms we throw out in leadership a lot of times is that servant leadership that, you know, that Jesus, you know, so well demonstrated. And I think that some of those concepts are incorporated here. I mean, in the way that Jesus was certainly a leader, um, you know, he also took time to, to submit himself not only to the Father, but even to his disciples to wash their feet mm -hmm. uh, because he knew you know, what he needed to be able to show them in the kind of life that they would leave as servants and not as masters right. and reminding them that their relationship with the father was the most important thing about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. What do you think, Andrew? What jumps out to I you? I mean, uh, just, you know, the big thing here is kind of that first part of verse one or that second half of verse one. And, uh, the last part of the verse, you know, both of the instruction given to the wives and the husband kind of has a caveat with, um, you know, do these things because this can be the result. Um, and for the women, it, it's teaching obedience. And for the men, it's teaching uh, about relationship with God and prayer life. And <clears throat> I think that, um, you know, that even though these things are both kind of addressed singularly to wives and to husbands i think uh, what's directed at the wives could be taken uh, for a lot of us in general um you know <clears throat> don't don't dress yourself up on the outside to be something that you're not on the inside that's a um, useful concept mm -hmm. yeah and and i think about this a lot in uh, leading worship um you know sometimes our outward expression is not always um, equivalent to our inward heart and our inward motivation. 
um, and making sure that our um, adornment, that our uh, primary concern is not how we look in a certain situation, but where our heart is, where our mind is, what is our motivation in all of it. And so that's just, uh, you know, when I read through this, it's something that I kind of take away. I know that's a little extra biblical from what it is, <laughs> but um, I think that it definitely applies uh, across the board for believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I, I'm, I completely, I completely agree with you, Andrew, that he's really emphasizing, you know, the heart and the, you know, the attitude that you have within yourselves is really the most beautiful. Your spiritual aspects are really the most beautiful part about you. And he's not prohibiting, you know, uh, from, you know, getting your hair done and your nails done. He's saying, mm -hmm. you know, those are okay, but what's most important is for you to be beautiful on the inside and for your spirit to be beautiful. And, um, and that's certainly what, you know, whether you're male or female, that's certainly what we want to strive for, you know, is having a, you know, a spirit that is in, in cohesion with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, sort of great cultural misconceptions of this, idea of um, genders being different and all of that is that um, if you believe that then you believe that women are weak that they're um, mm. you know, they're that they're well one that they're less than in value but also that they're weak and so one of the things that I really liked about this text was it talks a lot about the submission and and um, uh, e even I think names uh, verse 7 women as a weaker partner and so you know some people may look at this text and kind of take that perspective but i love the end of verse six i was telling jacob earlier it's probably my favorite part in the whole passage because i have women in my life that totally live this out but he's talking about sarah now sarah had um submitted herself to abraham and then he says you have become her children when you do what is good and do not fear any intimidation. That doesn't sound weak to me. Um, that doesn't sound like um, a, a weak, quiet little person. Um, that ca actually sounds like somebody who might even have a little bit of fierceness to them. Um, and uh, I just, I love that, um, that mm. perspective that you can be submitted um, you can live within your role. Um, and this really, you know, we can, as we've been doing the whole study, we can take this to men and women. You can live within your role without being, um, uh, a, a doormat or, a um, a just totally walk all over them kind of person. Um, mm. and I think that that's, a it's something that we, that we can maybe learn a little bit about the Christian life from that perspective. Yeah. yeah. Well, and just in the, you know, in the context of Christian gender roles, um, from what we get from a biblical perspective, what, what frustrates me so much when people um, try to say that, Oh, well, when you apply these roles to women, you're lessening their value. Like, no, like there's so value, there's so much value in what God has called them to mm -hmm. and the gifts that God has given them. And I think it's more sinful for us to say, okay, ignore what God has given you and called you to do so you can be something that you're not. Um, and I think that's kind of just uh, a picture of our culture um, mm -hmm. in a nutshell of um, ignoring what God has blessed us with, what God has given us to do good work for his kingdom and trying to be something that we're not mm -hmm. um, and not being good at it. Right. Um, and I think that uh, at, at the root of all of this, um, when you go back to when Adam and Eve sinned and the first gender roles were given, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, essentially what God tells them is if you don't fulfill what I've called you to do, it's sin. And so when we as men desire to be something other than what God has called us to be, or women desire to be something other than what God has called them to be, essentially we're entering into sin because we're not using what God has made the way that God has meant it to be used. Mm -hmm. I might leave well, it. And I, and I, I like the reminder there in verse seven, talking about his and says, and Peter's probably talking a little bit from a cultural perspective um, from a physical perspective, yes, women are physically overall weaker than men physically. 
certainly socially in that time, they would have been mm. in, a, in a weaker position than a man. But then he reminds <laughs> men and husbands, hey, look, they are co-heirs with you. They are equal <clears throat> I'm, in my eyes, they are equal at the cross. They are equal in deserving of grace. And you need to treat them that way. And if yep. you don't, you, I'm not going to hear your prayers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. The word honor there, um, looking at, uh, doing a little word study there on that. Time, it's, uh, it's value, price, uh, is, is really the meaning behind it. Um, honor, value, or price. And so it's telling us to um, consider as we honor the, the woman as the physically, maybe physically weaker vessel, or, or like Peter said, in culture, maybe there uh, at that time, maybe there was something to that. But he's saying, have a, have a high price, have a high value, have a high, you know, it's like uh, put put a high value, honor them, you know, and it's awfully convicting, uh, yeah. you know, we how how we should deal with these things. And to be, be real honest, I mean, let's just you know to speak to kind of the elephant in the room. Uh, some of us grew up in churches, homes. I mean, good Christian people. I'm not saying they didn't love Jesus, but. There was not always, I don't feel like I, uh, that I always, not, not necessarily with my parents, but sometimes in, in church life, I don't feel like I've always seen the proper biblical balance. Right. Uh, and right. certainly that can go both ways. But, but um, we're, as Andrew spoke to, we're going to experience the greatest blessing when we're <laughs> functioning um, in the way that God has made us to function. Mm-hmm. And certainly that goes for gender roles and, and marriage and everything. That's why people, a lot of times they, they get a little angry with us, uh, assuming that, you know, we are angry with certain people that live outside of what God has done. We're not angry. We should not be angry with the people. Mm-hmm. Um, we should be just sharing with them that, that God has a good plan. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that God's love for them can lead them to better things than their own selfish desires can. Right. But yeah, honoring the woman, you know, that word honor there, value, pride, um, it, it shows us that we're supposed to have a very high um, appreciation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately, obviously, even in biblical and in church circles, I, I have counseled countless women, unfortunately, who are, are filled with hurt and are victimized because of a supposed <clears throat> believing and that uses as a, as a bully position. Yeah. And, and that is obviously, I know you guys would all agree that that is completely a misreading of the text mm-hmm. and, uh, for either spouse to be able to use this as a bully position to force something that you want uh, to force the other person to do something to, uh, to to bring benefit to you is completely contrary to God's teachings, you know. Here, right. and uh, and it's and it's fortunately it's quite sad yeah. uh, that that these verses and the Pauline epistles, you know, that say refer to some of the same things, you know, are used. Uh, and, and and I'll be well, the elephant room by by men, you know, to yeah. you know to force their women, you know, quote unquote, to you know to submit, which is so unhealthy, unbiblical, mm-hmm. and completely you know, uncalled for. And as, as we were talking earlier, you know, my responsibility is not to get a spouse or another person in my life to behave a certain way. My responsibility is to look to God for how he wants me to live, mm-hmm. you know, and then my responsibility after that is to love the people that God brings into my life. And then it's the Holy Spirit's job to bring conviction for other things. Hmm. Yeah. Well, God's word is so clear in, um, showing compassion and understanding and grace um, anytime it talks about roles of any individual. Right. Um, here, you know, it talks about likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to them. Um, and then you, you have when uh, scripture talks about children, obey your parents, you know, then it says fathers don't exasperate your children. <laughs> like it, it, 
it doesn't leave room for someone to use this as an abusive tool to force somebody into submission. Um, it's a reminder of enjoying creation the way that God meant it to be. Um, and that we both have a role to take care of one another, to show compassion to one another. Um, and it's like, like Peter said, it's not a bully tool. It's, it's something that should cause conviction in our lives to be better. Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be, well, my wife isn't submissive, so she needs to read this first. It should be like, no, maybe my wife isn't submissive because I'm not honoring her the way that I should. Mm. Um, and parents shouldn't look at it and say, well, my children are disobedient because they're terrible kids. I'm going to throw the Bible at them. It should be, well, maybe I'm exasperating my children. I think there's always a point of internal reflection in these passages to say, am I being the person that God has called me to be? Um, and am I genuinely evaluating who I am? Right. Yeah, I think that's the interesting thing about all of these different passages that kind of define these different um, roles and, and relationships in life is that uh, none of them name the person, name the enforcer of these rules. Um, they don't say wives do this and husbands, if they don't, then you can do this, you know, and or um, slaves and masters or kids and fathers or I mean, it, it probably um, it it gives parents that ability more than any other role. Uh, but even even with that, it, it, it seems like, you know, the Holy Spirit guided these writers of the epistles to always kind of come back to the other side, like you're talking about, Andrew, the other side of that relationship and say, while you're doing this, you make sure and do this. While you do this, mm -hmm. you make sure you do this. Not you do this and husband, if they don't do this, then you you do this. You make sure that this happens. Nobody, it's, it's really more up to the Holy Spirit um, and the life of the person and up to that person to um, live their role out. And so I think when we see, um, like what you're talking about, Jacob, with the sort of the misuse of this text um, among men, that's exactly what they're doing. They're, well, my, my wife's not doing this. And so, or I'm going to make my wife do this by telling her all of these edicts from on high to do this when the text never <laughs> says that it never it never gives it never allows for any enforcement of these rules instead it's it's calling people to be christ-like um to be holy and so i i think that that's something that we can um always we we like to use these as billy clubs um and really what we need to do is what what all of y'all have been talking about is use them as a tool of self-reflection more than uh, more than telling somebody what they should or shouldn't do yeah. um, although it can do that too i mean you know in counseling situations and 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 when someone you know when someone who may be a new believer who's coming to faith in christ um that was one thing that i read in uh the bible backgrounds commentary talking about how uh, Peter kind of chooses to talk about this situation probably because women came to faith in Christ a lot faster um, than men did because, and what do you know, it's still happening. Um, but, um, but because the uh, women had a lot less to lose to uh, socially. Um, and so, you know, there's a, um, I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I think that there's a, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. Somebody save me. Well, there's a, there's a, there's probably a, in, in some situations, uh, emotionally at least, there's probably more of a commitment and maybe more of a, a cost or challenge for the lady sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if it's in a culture to where um, you know, Middle East, even right now, or, or somewhere like that, you know. Um, yeah, it can definitely be that one or the other, depending on the culture and the circumstances, may have a higher cost or a higher emotional investment. Not mm -hmm. to say it should be that way. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, prayerfully, it's equal, but 
because of circumstances, sometimes one or the other has a lot higher, just the way Jesus did with us, you know, giving himself. We, we gave nothing, you know, yeah. um, and he loved us. We put him on the cross. He loved us while he was on the cross. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's hard for us, right? And God forgive me because he knows I'm nowhere near perfect at this sacrificial love thing. But, um, but you know, I, wanna, I do want to say back to what Andrew pointed out, Peter pointed out, uh, as humans, we are not very quick to look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. You know, we could go into family counseling and everybody walking out saying, well, see if you would fix yourself right. and get fixed and if you would do this and if you would do that, then I could do what I'm supposed to know. We're supposed to look in the mirror of the whole, yeah. you know, that the Holy Spirit gives us the mirror of conviction and be willing to say, okay, Jack or Jill or whoever, you need to do this. Mm-hmm. You need to love your wife. You need to honor your wife or wives. You need to love your husband and, and uh, things like that. So yeah. certainly it's, it's got to start with self reflection, making sure that we're fulfilling our role and then praying for uh, the, our partner and praying mm-hmm. for ourselves and our partner. Mm-hmm. And to follow up on what Brian said earlier, the scriptures don't say, wives submit to your husbands. And when you submit to him, he will definitely become a believer and he will definitely then cherish and honor you. And all you have to do is submit and therefore you will force him to do this. Yeah. And it doesn't say husbands, oh, as soon as your wife submits, then you need to cherish her and you need to honor her. And then your prayers can be heard. No, it's yeah. it, one is directed to that person. You do this regardless of what the other person does in the relationship, because this is your responsibility. Yeah, for sure. It's not a magic formula. <laughs> well, and, and one thing I think that's important to remember Ephesians five and this text to me, while it's six verses to one, to me, the one verse carries just as much weight to the men as mm-hmm. the six do to the women and to, to, always just remember the you know the weight of the things fall on us mm-hmm. uh and we do have a leadership role in the home mm-hmm. not a dictatorship role but a leadership role mm-hmm. and we're not dictators in our marriages but we are leaders and the best way to lead is to always try to lead in in humility and let, let's also be honest and realize to everybody that listens to this men and women we all fail at this some point, at some point. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the goal. This is what we press toward. This is to help us get more to where we need to be following Jesus. So if you listen to this and you say, man, you know, I've really been blowing it. Well, join the crowd of four looking at you through the, <laughs> you know, through the computer because we all blow it. Um, so I don't want anybody just listening to this and saying, well, it's too late or going to. No, do the opposite. Let's listen to this and, and starting me with myself, let's look in the mirror and pray that God will show us how I can do better. Yeah. Yeah. We are always the starting place for the change in every relationship. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, I feel like we, uh, we talked about some good stuff. We probably didn't talk about everything, but you know, as we said already, we're imperfect. <laughs> It's one of those texts, man, we could, you know, we could keep breaking it down, but I think we've touched on all the, the main points. And um, I know for me, it's been very convicting and, yeah. and uh, helps me evaluate and reminds me of some things that, that I need to do every day. Absolutely. Well, Peter, would you uh, close us out in prayer? Father, we are ever thankful for your grace and mercy in our lives. And um, Father, let us always remind ourselves um, that my responsibility is to is for, for me to grow and to become Christ-like and to be conformed into your image. And hopefully, Father, as I submit to you, as we um, look to you, as we try to grow more like you, uh, that others will come along with us in that journey and that, that um, through our obedience to you, that you will be glorified and that uh, that glory that you that uh, is given to you will allow others to see just uh, your love and your grace and your mercy. Uh, Father, he, help each one of us guys uh, to love 
uh, people in our lives better and to be uh, to show a more Christ-like love, a more honoring love uh, to each person that um, you bring into our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. It's fun. It's good. Enjoyed it.